What I want to talk about today is the SPX market internals. So the advantage with the SPX is it's an index and that means it's, it's made up of component stocks and in the case of the S&P 500, we have 500 stocks that go into the S&P index itself. So there is already some internals available and one is the wall SPD which tells you the up minus down volume of all the stocks in the S&P. So uh, any stock that's up, that, uh, that volume is counted as up volume and any stock that's down, it's counted as down volume. And then you have advances minus declines, the ADSPD. So all of these, they try to give you a sense of the breadth of the market. So when I say breadth, okay, it's not just what is one stock doing, what is one index doing, what is the internals of that index. So which means in the, in the case of the S&P 500, we're looking at 500 stocks. Then there's a third one called the ticks. And the ticks is, it's just an uptick minus down tick. So every millisecond, all these 500 stocks, they are either ticking up or ticking down. And so the ticks calculates what is the number of upticks, what is the number of down ticks, and it gives you a continuous reading when the markets are open. So the ticks in that sense is a lowest denominator in the sense that the, it's, it's totally raw data. I mean, it's the probably the rawest is not a good way, is not a right word, but it is the rawest data coming from the market because it is computing things at real time on a tick by tick basis. So even in one second, if you have a, uh, a stock like Apple, for example, in one second, it might be ticking several, you know, maybe even hundreds of times. And so all of those are being calculated. So the ticks per se, if you look at the chart and I can show that to you, the ticks per se is not very helpful in general. But then what you can do is do a cumulative ticks. So which means for as soon as the market starts, the up ticks and the down ticks are being calculated. And then there is a cumulative total that is running as, uh, as long as the markets are open. Now, this is what really becomes extremely helpful and gives you a perfect uh, indication of the market breadth. Now, some people may have attended this webinar about two or three weeks ago, a couple of weeks ago, I think. And um, we did, uh, you know, we did, uh, you know, look at these uh, cumulative ticks as well. Now, one of the things, and of course, you know, I've been looking at it uh, also since then. And one of the things that uh, we have to think about the ticks are, see the ticks start calculating at the beginning of the market. So when the market opens, and so you want to let the ticks go for some time. And, and, and for some time, I mean like half an hour, one hour. And because you need to let the market breadth start showing itself. And so what we did in the earlier webinars, we took a couple of trades at the beginning, and that's actually the wrong thing to do. You have to wait for some time so, so that the tick information starts developing and starts building and starts developing a pattern or a trend. And that's when you want to get in. So this is what we are going to look at today, the ticks indicator. And then what we'll also look at is something called a custom RSI. So if you've heard of the RSI indicator or if you've seen it, they generally tell you when a stock is overbought and oversold. So generally considered to be a reversal. When it goes into the overbought at the top, you expect some sort of a reversal and the same thing at the bottom. But this custom RSI has been customized to depict bullish and bearish zones. So then it starts becoming persistent. So what I mean is you'll see it on the chart that once it gets into the bullish zone, it, you know, it could remain there. It could remain there. And that tells you to remain in the trade. Now, not all, not all the time will it remain there. I mean, it all depends what the market does. But when it remains in a zone, when it's persistent, that's when you want to stay in the trade. And then the custom RSI works for any time frame, day, swing, or longer term. And it works on any chart, currency, commodity, stocks. So it's a very helpful indicator. So finally, I just want to leave you with some links here. Uh, this is of course going to be recorded, so you don't need to write this down, but uh, you know, you can, uh, if you want to write it down, that's fine. But if you need more information, there's a YouTube playlist for the custom RSI, there's a YouTube playlist for the SPX algo itself. And of course, this is my, my email, and I'll come back to this a little later. Uh, and if you have any questions, you can, uh, you know, you can send me an email here. All right, so that's as far as the presentation is concerned. What I want to do is, first of all, change this to a five minute chart right now. We can go back and see you know, on, on these previous five days at least uh, what exactly happened. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back here and go to each of these days. Now the ticks will only work when the markets are open. So 
and you know the futures trade uh, almost 24 hours but you're not going to get data when the markets are not open so here this is uh, yesterday's price action and this is yesterday's tick action so now this is a five minute chart so I think once the market opens and it's gone into the first 30 minutes to one hour that's when you want to change the chart to a five minute because the five minute gives you much better perspective of what is going on with the internals and so if you looked at the market uh, yesterday I think the futures were up a little bit about three four points but then the markets ended down uh, you know 10 points and you can see that even though the markets tried to go up at the open uh, it, it the ticks never really you know caught up uh, you know in, in a whole a lot of way even if you can see the biggest uh, the highest tick here was positive 161 and so that itself will tell you that yes the market is trying to go up but the ticks are not responding and of course the custom RSI only tells you the price action so really you want to look at the ticks to understand what's going on and then sure enough on the five minute chart once you see two or three red dots or two or three green dots developing that's when you're looking for a trade so you know if you if you give up the if you discount the first half an hour to one hour what what you're seeing is somewhere here there's a you know a persistent trend developing and so you know if you took the trade let's say over here when the S&P when the ES was at 3014 I'm looking at the level on the right hand side somewhere here uh, you, you know you can write this nicely and you can see the ticks are going to support your trade and you can see that uh, you know at some point and the RSI also support the RSI is telling you stay in this trade it's still going bearish when the RSI turns around that's when it's RSI is telling you only price action though so even though the ticks are going down RSI is saying hey there is some you know uh, change happening with the price action right here and so you want to get ready to get out of your put trade at that point and then it's just it just chops around here and there it briefly goes into the bullish but the ticks are still negative here the ticks at this point are still three you know negative 392 and, and then another bearish move comes and then there is a persistent move of the of, of the uh, I mean there's a persistent red dots coming in and the RSI goes back into the bearish zone and then from here at least until here you have a small trade there so each of these are five minutes so you know both of these trades would have lasted about half an hour each this one would have been very very profitable it would have been nice uh, this one would have been okay not not that bad but what you want to do is wait for these opportunities and take just one or two trades during the day and that's you know that's that's the best way to take advantage of day trading at least on the S&P